Good morning traders, Paul here with Gamma Edge. Today is the 1st of August. Wow, things fly. Let's get started. Here's the fine print. We ask that you pause your player, read to the end. If you agree, hit the play button. The market model, as we use the cumulative tick as our predominant way to ascertain what's going on, remains quite bullish. Um, we presented a video, it's posted in the Discord, it's also posted here on YouTube this weekend, that discusses this circle one, circle two, circle three construct. Very quickly here, when we have the white cumulative tick, this is the instantaneous cumulative tick above the shortest term moving averages and they're starting to spread apart, that is a re-entry signal. We say re-entry because we've already been playing a, a role here. The second part of the criteria for uh, a full-on, you know, pedal to the metal type of thing is where we have the instantaneous cumulative tick above what we call the ribbon or the historical moving averages. That's also a very, very good indication that, uh, that things are moving up. And then finally, over here at circle three, the long-term trend is intact. And we measure that by the relative position of the uh, shortest term moving average here in red uh, to the longest term moving average here in cyan. And when the red is above the cyan, um, we, uh, we are in an uptrend. Uh, in terms of that uptrend, uh, we call this a ribbon inversion. Uh, we are looking at day nine completed on Friday. So you can see that uh, we're in this distribution. We're walking out the uh, um, uh, the overall distribution. This is about 10 years of data that you're looking at here. Why this is important, it's not predictive, but it does say once we catch the trend, uh, we tend to stay in the trend for, uh, for some time. So we are looking to continue to ride this and all signals still indicate bullishness. Perhaps a little extension here, lockout rally. We can't really get in easily unless you buy at the open or on some sort of pullback. But other than that, um, you know, things are looking really good. The SPX condition on a day over day, I have the combo here. The combo is comprised of the AM and the PM. Why this is uh, important, we compare it to the previous day. And you can see that the cumulative uh, gamma on the negative side, on the put side, is smaller than the cumulative gamma on the right side, or which is the call side. When we have this condition and we have a day over day change to the upside, it's a, it's a good thing. And what we're looking at here is this positive balance to the upside. You can see that the AM settled, which are just the monthlies, and we can think these are, are mostly institutional monies. Uh, are also participating and we're starting to see calls go in, puts come out, and part of this is due to the expiries that we see uh, in general, but we also see a lot of action going on. Now, AM settled are just that, they are the monthlies. There were, was no expiry this past Friday, but we do see uh, calls and puts coming in and flowing out of the, uh, the system, and that's what's given rise to this. On the uh, SPXP, which is the PM settled, very, very low demand for puts, extremely high demand for calls, and you can see that we've had a shift upward uh, relative to where we were in the uh, the zeros of the complex as well as the call gamma going out to uh, 4200. So across the board, we're looking really good uh, on the SPX, perhaps even starting to get a little extended in the short term with the SPXP, but nevertheless, uh, the, uh, the bulls are intact and playing the upside. So what causes these gamma levels to move? It's important uh, to make sure you understand why zero gex and plus gex and the other uh, gamma levels will move. Um, not gonna go into the details here. Pause your player, read this. If there are any questions, please come into the Discord and ask questions. A lot of people there will be able to answer your questions, uh, of course, including myself. Taking a look at the zero histories, uh, across the top we have the zeros uh, of the SPX. Um, Again, the AM, PM over here, and then the SPY, Qs, and IWM here. Why this is important, uh, first of all, the blue line in the SPX is the same blue line. That is short-term price. We have the delta zero in yellow, and we have the gamma zero here in red. Now, the combo is the combination of these two. 
The AM is in isolation, and you can see it's less liquid, they are, there's a greater separation, and the bias is still downward in the deltas relative to the gamma. Uh, that being said, we are seeing uh, a turn up uh, despite the uh, impact of the expiries that uh, we have on a monthly basis here. And when we see this turn up, we do believe that there is a participation in the monthlies. Of course, we're seeing that visually here in the uh, SPXP, and then when you add these two together uh, through the OI, uh, you get this type of behavior. So we are believing that uh, the SPX complex is coming around. We're not seeing any bearishness in this right now. Uh, we're seeing the super tanker, which we call the SPXA, uh, rotate around, and uh, that's, uh, that's a bullish indication. Down here in the SPY, the SPY trades a lot like the PM settled, very liquid, very tight uh, uh, bounding range on the TG, TGZ, the gamma zero, as well as the delta zero. You can see there is a little bit of a divergence here. There is some downside that is being placed in, a longer downside that's being placed in, in terms of the delta. That's one way to interpret this. But nevertheless, price is taking off, gamma is taking off, and, uh, and even the deltas are taking off, although the net is not keeping up with the, uh, the short-term gamma. Here on the Qs, uh, again, trades much like the SPXP, very tight bounding range. Uh, you can see a little bit of separation there. Uh, Qs have been very strong, uh, as, as we all know, but, uh, and, and tightly bound with, uh, with the gamma zero and the delta zero. We want to watch for a break of the gamma zero first, and when we see that, we may have an indication that this particular trend is, uh, is on its downside. IWM has just been broken. Um, no other way to say it. Uh, we, we are coming up in the deltas, uh, as you can see here in yellow. Uh, we have not yet taken. Uh, this is uh, still a very bearish uh, type of setup that we see here. We're not able to take out the, uh, the gamma zero. Uh, the small caps are just having a hard time getting, getting their feet underneath them, but of course they are, are moving up. When we take a look at the levels for today, uh, we did finish Friday at the 4130 strike. Uh, the horizontal line here shows that. Uh, you can show I, I showed the uh, relationship between the PM settled and the combo level over here. Just want to draw your eye to circles one, two, and three. These are really key levels that we're watching for the uh, the combo complex. Look at the expected move here, 2.14%. So still anticipating low vol lower volatility than what we normally see. On the zero DTE, uh, really very odd looking structure. A lot of strikes were added um, that uh, have no open interest. Uh, this is what that looks like. So they were added over the weekend. And so there is some anticipation that if, uh, if we are going to move up, we could start seeing the filling in of these, uh, these ranges to the upside. Uh, but again, this is the zero DTE, no strikes are there. So we may see some play up there. We may see a push there. Do want to call your eye here to 4150. That is where the balance of uh, uh, moneyness is going to shift here today. Uh, and you can see that the open interest um, dominant uh, expiry for the calls is sitting here at 4200. Above 4200, not expecting any contribution from the zero DT. On the downside, that 4105 is kind of the top of transition all the way on down to the bottom of 4050. Uh, below that, there's not a lot down there. We have a nice support mechanism in the positive deltas here. So uh, you know, we're thinking the zero DT is not much of anything to worry about today, but it is you know, fairly significant overall, especially being a Monday. Taking a look at the overall combo here, uh, again, circle one, circle two, circle three, showing the primary levels. We've got a sea of green here. Uh, in the deltas, it should be supportive in the downside if we do decide to go down. You can see down here at the 4,000 strike, puts are still dominating at, uh, and, and growing, by the way. Uh, but that being said, we have a positive gamma. So we have a positive gamma due to the shorter term nature of the calls here. Um, the puts that are here are longer out and dated in time, and so that's uh, um, why their gamma influence is less and, and not, uh, not as significant. Uh, the transition, 4050, 4055, below that, things get kind of loose all the way on down off the screen here. Uh, to the upside, you can see where we finished on Friday, and you can see that that 4150 strike and 4200 are really, really a key. To the downside, 3600 remains the dominant downside target. 
And the other thing that I want to point out here is that 31% or so of the SPX is now going to roll off between now and, and the monthly. Um, we're going to watch this number. Is if it continues to grow, we may see some uh, some fireworks as we uh, we go through August. Taking a look at the overall SPX structure, just a large jump here in the 4200 strike as positive gamma from uh, from the, the other levels. I urge everyone to go back and take a look at that. You can see actually some growth here, uh, all the way up here. Uh, this is the new 4340 uh, short. Uh, positions that opened up on Friday rolled out from uh, the JPM um, uh, hedging flow. So 4300s here, 4200, 4100. And you can see we're right here and we've got this 4150 that's uh, that's out there. Top of the transition sits here at 4050 or so and you can see below that it gets really kind of loose. We've got a, a couple spikes that uh, may provide some liquidity but you can see they're also offset as we go down here. Uh, below this. This is actually the JPM hedge here at 4,005. The 3,900 strike and the 3,600 strike are getting very, very close in magnitude. The fact that we're up here and this has uh, a significant magnitude, if we do drop, this will grow faster, most likely, unless we see a lot of stacking here in the zero DT or the short term uh, uh, plays here. So the summary for today, the short-term trend is still up. Uh, we could be in a lockout too. Uh, we've talked about that in the Discord. Long-term trend is intact. Watch for re-entry points on the long side. So watch for a little bit of weakness and then you know a resumption of that uptrend on the short-term uh, gamma or short-term cumulative tick, excuse me. 4050 is the downside transition line. Uh, watch that 4100 line, like I said right here. Watch that uh, where we are right there. Upside targets 4200 for the obvious reasons. It is the dominant upside uh, uh, where everyone is looking to play. Um, the daily change in the wing charts is bullish. You know we're we're seeing good things there, and the bias is upward as measured on multiple things. So just keep an eye there. So that's it for today. Um, if you like today's content, I would urge everyone to come join us in our Discord. Uh, go to this link right here, click the pricing tab, uh, sign up, and I'll take you to a 14-day free trial in the Discord. All the tools turned on, uh, lots of great traders, a lot of uh, experience levels and portfolio sizes and all sorts of fun stuff. So uh, really, really good, really good group of people. Uh, follow us on Twitter, please, at Gamma Edges. That helps us uh, get, get boosted up there in the, uh, the search engines that are, uh, Twitter has. And then, of course, here on YouTube, if you like today's content, let me know by smashing that like button. And, of course, follow us so that you get notified next time we post something. So with that, uh, I'll bid you farewell. Uh, thanks again. See you in the Discord. Have a good week, everyone.